Hey guys. Um, so today I kind of wanted to start making a segment about um, all the Claire senses and teaching them to you guys, really, and giving like examples of what they are, um, how you can develop them if you choose to, um, and even some examples of some you know well-known people that we know that actually have it. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, technically we all have a version of all the Claire senses. Uh, it's just some of us, you know, are more prone to some of them more than others and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. Now, at the end of the day, I'm not like an expert or anything like that. I'm still technically learning about a lot of them myself. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've all obviously experienced quite a bit of them um, throughout my life and whatnot. But yeah, by all means, I'm not an expert. I'm just pretty much wanting to give you the foundation of what they are so that you can build on it yourself and do your own research and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's easier to kind of at least have a, a core foundation of what they are before you go on, on down that road. Because uh, yeah, I didn't really have that <laughs> that foundation. So a lot of it was like, really, what the fuck is going on type shit. Um, so yeah, I just kind of want to help you guys out so you're not going through that same the same issues. First one I'm really going to be talking about is clairvoyance. Um, and I chose clairvoyance because it's one of the typical ones that most people already know about it, or at least generally know about it. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking about probably just going, yeah, starting from the ones, the well-known ones, and then kind of going from there. Um, I'm going to be talking about nine of them that I personally know. I have heard that there's a lot more. Um, truthfully, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot more than that, but just like chakras, we know of them. Most of us know of there being seven, but truthfully, there's a hell of a lot more than seven. Um, and yeah, the clear senses are kind of similar in that aspect, but I'm going to talk about the nine that I personally already know. So all of our clear senses work in conjunction with each other in order to like um, read uh, like divination tools or read situations, read rooms, um, read people. <laughs> they all work in, work together in order for you to do that. Um, and so if you're somebody who's like trying to learn how to be a tarot reader, for instance, uh, clairvoyance is a ability that would be um, a nice one to have. I mean, technically all, like I said, they all kind of work together in order to um, like read everything. But um, one, like for instance, some examples would be like if you uh, had clairvoyance and you could uh, like read, you did tarot or whatnot, um, you would like see a storyline um, in your head as you're looking at the cards in conjunction with being able to know what the cards mean um, in a symbolic way per your perspective perspective remind you because everybody has a different perspective on everything so it's it's a lot when you go down this little rabbit hole it's a lot and <laughs> i feel like i'm gonna keep going down on ta a lot of tangents through this now that i'm now that i'm coming to terms with this and i'm just gonna apologize prior because that's that's probably gonna happen i'm probably gonna go on a lot of tangents but yeah so if you're trying to be a tarot reader clairvoyance is a sense that would be nice to have but that's not, it's not necessarily, you can actually be a tarot reader and your clairvoyance sucks, <laughs> but all your other senses are like crazy. You know what I mean? So it really just depends on you personally, but clairvoyance is one sense that you would probably have if you were a tarot reader or if you're trying to become a tarot reader. So yeah, like I said, the first um, clair sense we're going to be talking about is clairvoyance and clairvoyance is pretty much it's clear sight uh, or clear seeing. Um, whichever you prefer, but same shit. An easy way to kind of think about what the clear senses are, pretty much like a another version of our regular senses. So we obviously know what our regular senses is, you know, sight, smell, touch, hear, all that good shit. And the clear senses are just like a piggyback off of the regular senses. So um, you know what, I got you. Let me show you like an analogy. Give me a second. Okay, so I have a quarter. So the head side of the quarter is our regular senses. So sight, hearing, touch, all that good shit. And then the tail side of the quarter is our clair senses. Um, so in this particular one, since we're talking about clairvoyance, the heads, that's your regular sight, your regular being able to see in this whole 3D rea reality. And then the tail side is clairvoyance, which is clear sight. So some examples of clairvoyance would be um, vivid dreams, uh, prophetic dreams. Um, so meaning like uh, you dream of something and then it'll actually happen in reality in some way, shape or form. I mean, granted, dreams, you don't really want to look at them literally because uh, it's really just your subconscious trying to communicate with you um, in the best way that they can. 
well, it can, yeah. But you you personally have to analyze it from you know how how you view life, how you know your perspective on everything in order to actually kind of figure it out. I mean, obviously, there's generalizations for what you know, like if you dream of a snake or if you dream of a a dog or you know a dream of a giant or some shit like that. Like this you know, um, common threads because, because most people usually are going through the same experiences at that time. But to predict future events in general, um, whether it be in dream or without um, actually dream, like if you have to do like a full on ritual, still you are able to predict something in the future that that could happen or did happen or will happen or whatever. That is a version. Seeing images in like clouds or um, or symbols in clouds or whatnot um, or technically anything really anything that you can physically see with your eyes if you can see images or symbols or whatnot in it that's a version of clairvoyance like flashing orbs um or a, like a like flashing orbs like black orbs or like flashing lights like at the corner of your eyes being able to see entities or um like yeah just like see full-on things whether it's whether it's just like a, like I said, a black orb, or if it's a full on being. Even though clairvoyance is the most well known uh, Claire, it's also the one that a lot of people are more afraid of if it comes to that aspect, because there's a lot of religious people out there. And I'm not, I'm not saying anything against being religious, because I feel like all religion have uh, the core meaning of life in general. Um, but because we are different beings and we are, you know, different cultures and whatnot, we have to have our own to kind of explain us because that's what human beings do. We like to tribalize, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, we've doing, been doing that since the beginning of time. But beyond all of that, um, when it comes to thinking about the other side, it's like a, it can be a hindrance sometimes. Um, so. Yeah, but that's my view on that. I think the only other one I can kind of think of, I mean, there's plenty of other ones. I just like at the top of my head, I can't think of all of them. But another one is um, if you ever had an imaginary friend or any version of an imaginary friend when you were a child, that is a um, another example of clairvoyance. Okay, so we have a new background because I just got off work. But um, <laughs> some examples of some well-known people that have had uh, clairvoyance. Um, Nostradamus, um, Edgar Casey, um, Left Eye from TLC, uh, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, Abraham Lincoln and Left Eye, they actually both um, dreamt of their deaths prior uh, prior to it. Um, I'm gonna like put some like information, like a picture or whatever of each of these people um, that I've mentioned, um, like somewhere, somewhere around here. <laughs> so, some ways to kind of develop your clairvoyance skills there's a couple that i can kind of like throw out there um most of them are kind of like little games um because yeah i kind of viewed life as like a big video game <laughs> like we're i feel like we're like in a simulation so um whether that's true or not doesn't matter it's my perspective so it doesn't really matter if we agree you know we're gonna agree to disagree or if you agree cool beans um but either way, I kind of view everything as like little missions <laughs> in life. Um, and yeah, you just kind of experiencing those those uh, little mini missions and kind of going from there. But uh, the main one is meditation. And truthfully, meditation is going to be more for all of the clear senses um, and not even just that, just see your like regular life in general, like meditation will help it, it will benefit you in so many ways in your life um and when it comes to meditating like you can meditate in any kind of way shape or form you can meditate by dancing you can meditate by just listening to music um you can just you know sit cross-legged like you know most people know um you can be cooking you can be taking a walk in nature or in your house um just playing with your animals or your kids. Um, meditating is really just focusing on one particular uh, experience. So it doesn't matter what you're doing. It's just, you just have to be focusing on that, like be completely present in that situation um, or environment or whatever. Um, and you can like, so you can be doing it with, like I said, your eyes open or closed or whatever, because you can literally be making, doing it however you want to. And the timing, 
the longer that you meditate, the more beneficial it will be, obviously. Makes sense, especially since uh, the reality that we live on time is a very important thing. Even though it's a man-made concept, but still it's a very important thing in this reality. So the longer that you actually meditate, the more beneficial it will be because the more concrete it will be um, and whatnot. But technically, time is a man-made concept. So meditate, like you can meditate for five minutes and you will still get an amazing amount of benefits from that. Um, it just, it's, it's like I said, it's completely up to you. There's no right or wrong way to do it at all. Uh, if you want to start off with like five minutes or whatnot, or three minutes even, <laughs> just to start off with something. And yeah, just start off some way, shape or form because meditating is so beneficial and you will you will start seeing the the benefits pretty quickly once you start. Um, a lot of weight, a lot of things that people kind of like, well, yeah, it kind of like blocks them from wanting to meditate because they say like their mind races and whatnot. That's the point. <laughs> it's gonna race. That's what our minds do. You know what I mean? You're not the point of the the point of it is not to shut your mind up. The point of it is to be present in the moment of whatever you're doing. That's the point. Um, so if your mind wants to, you know, talk about like freaking all kind of these crazy nonsense, let it talk about it. And when you notice it, just be like, okay, cool beans. I get it. Let me focus back on where, what I'm actually doing at this moment. Like that's, that's all. <laughs> and eventually as you start meditating more, um, like the, 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 there won't be so much busyness going on in your head because your, your body is going to naturally, your body wants to do whatever is easiest for you <laughs> and with you um with you letting those uh the the thoughts or whatnot just kind of passing through and then actually just letting it letting it do its thing and then going back to your uh reality or whatever you're actually doing over time your body's gonna understand okay this is this is what you want to do this makes it easier for you to function so we're gonna start doing it this way like that think of your your body is like a car and your brain is like you the driver and yeah your your car is gonna sit there and do whatever you tell it to do <laughs> you know what i mean but you have to know what you want it to do so but anyway other um ways that you can um develop your clairvoyant skills um if you're actually with somebody like a family member or a friend or whatnot you can have them hide objects in like anything like a box or whatever and you can try to guess what's inside the box so um well if i'm not really guess you're using your intuition to kind of figure out what it is but you can use your clairvoyance by trying to um you pretty much would close your eyes and um usually you want to meditate like a few uh, for a few minutes or whatnot prior to just so you can kind of um get in a more stable energy um and then you're and then you kind of just ask your ask yourself questions like uh what's inside this box what color um is it what shape is it you know when you ask questions with any of these uh extra um tips i'm going to give you you always want to be very direct with your questions you don't want to be broad um so closer you want to usually kind of ask questions that are closer to like yes or no's um or um like you give like two options type of thing like you want to kind of narrow it down as as much as you can um just because it's less confusing especially when you're first starting you want it to be as less confusing as possible um you can obviously always ask for clarification and when i'm talking like this um who you're necessarily talking to it's really whoever whatever you believe in whether it's um you know god whether it's uh freaking muhammad whether it's fucking your universe um your subconscious like whatever you really you, whatever you personally believe in that's who you're talking to your higher self um your guides your spirit guides whoever you believe in that's who you're talking to <laughs> um because at the end of the day whatever question that you could possibly need you have the answers to it you just have to get in there to figure it out <laughs> um and using your clear senses or developing your clear senses can help you get closer to, to being able to answer the questions that you need answered um so yeah that's when i'm talking in that person like saying that you're um, asking questions that's who you're talking to generally just whoever it is that you personally believe in um 
but yeah, so you want to ask very, uh, very direct questions. And, uh, so you ask all these questions and, you know, and, uh, you'll, you'll pretty much get the answers to those and they will kind of narrow it down to whatever the object is inside the box. Um, and when you open up the box, like the first couple of tries, it's probably not going to be like, well, actually, you know, I lied. I like everybody's different because my first couple of times it was, you know, so everybody's different, but you could, no matter how different it is like say for instance if you thought um you asked if, if the color or whatever the object is is black or black or green or some shit like that and the color of it was yellow instead don't look at it as that as like a negative a complete negative i mean shoot yellow and green are pretty damn close <laughs> you know what i mean so it just you kind of have to look at all the positive that that's pretty much the gist of what i'm saying look at the positive aspects of what it is because maybe you know you got the color wrong but maybe you got the shape right um maybe you got you know the background of the box instead of the actual shape so you're getting closer but you're not actually you know in the object but as you continue developing these you're going to get better and better at it um that's why i actually do like a lot of games on my youtube and on my tiktok so you guys can like practice different things like that using all your clair senses without you actually realizing that you're using your clair senses um i mean some of you do but it, i've noticed a lot of people don't so <laughs> but um yeah, so that's one way if you actually have like um, somebody that you can uh, do it with. If, if you're just by yourself, you can um, close your eyes and kind of, so your um, your third eye or your uh, pineal gland is pretty much right here. It's right in between your eyebrows and right above your nose. And um, that's, it's a, it's a good chakra that you need pretty much open in order to uh, get really all of your clair senses truthfully. But really good for your um your clairs your clairvoyance because it's you know your eyes are right here so it's like it's it's pretty it's in a general the general local area <laughs> um so one way of being able to open up that particular chakra is you can just try to imagine an oval shape and then imagine it glowing uh, most people usually use the colors like gold or white um, but technically you can use the color of the actual chakra itself which is indigo um, you can try to imagine a very bright indigo or bright gold or bright silver or whatever whatever color that you want that it could be your favorite color it doesn't even necessarily have to be that um, but just kind of imagine um, that yeah, just imagine an oval shape and it's illuminating. And the longer that you do it, the brighter that it'll get. The you know, the more sharper that it'll get. You want to you want to go and continuously doing that um, that particular uh, test for yourself, I guess, um, until you can literally see it like like physically, like it's almost physically right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, usually, when you're doing things like this, even meditating and stuff like that, you'll kind of start feeling your body. Um, getting a little warm it's because of like that energy workup that you're doing um in order to to physically see that uh and that's with any of these senses um a good well not a good side effect but a side effect of it is you feel like your body heating up um and that's just the energy um yeah, that's just the energy working in there. Science and spirituality are actually very similar. They're just two different versions of the same fucking shit. At least that's what I believe anyway. I could be wrong, but I, I personally believe spirituality and science are one and the same. Um, but another way uh, that you can, another test that you can do for your, like if you're by yourself, you can imagine seven balloons and each of them as the color of the chakras. Um, again, if you want to you know, put them different colors, whatever. But I'm just, this is just an example. Um, you can have them all the different colors of um, all the seven chakras. And you can um, imagine, like, pretty much imagine everything about you. Start with one balloon and you just imagine everything about that balloon. Like, how long is the string? How big is the balloon? Um, what color is the balloon? Um, how high is it off the ground or where, wherever you are envisioning that you're at? Um, I mean, in, in, in this particular example, um, I'm saying like you're outside so um and what you're gonna do once you imagine everything that you could possibly physically think about that um that balloon like it's physically in front of you almost like you would let it float away up into the sky um until it's completely gone and then you go on to the next balloon and do the same thing um by the time you get to the seventh balloon you would yeah yeah your abilities would be pretty strong by then um and this is gonna take 
time like there's no time limit on any of these um some people it takes like months some years <laughs> you know what i mean some weeks it really just depends on how strong you're or how um how adaptable you are to the specific uh clair sense because like i said every clair everybody's um everybody personally are uh, more drawn to specific clair senses than others um or so easier for you to um learn the clair sense than others and it also depends on what whatever part of your life that you're at whatever part of the journey um, of your life that you're in you could you know attach to a specific uh sense faster than another one um it's just it's a lot of variables there's a lot of variables to this thing another thing is uh start keeping a dream journal um that will definitely uh help with your your clairvoyance and whatnot um and when you're like if you do start seeing things in your mind's eye or your uh your pineal gland or whatnot it's going to be different for everybody um some people can see like full-on storylines and vivid color and like literally like it feels like they're watching a, a legit movie right in front of them um some people everything's black and white um some people it's just like snippets of color like that my personally it's it's snippets of like it's like screenshots of a of a of a screen of a movie or something like that and it's it's pretty quick like i'm still i'm like i said i'm personally working on a lot of these um senses myself but yeah so like everybody's is a little bit differently so you don't want to sit there and try to um i mean you can eventually get it how you you really want it to be but when you're starting off don't get so hard on yourself and thinking that it has to be a specific way because it's going to be completely different for you than it is for somebody else who's doing this another um way you can develop the skills is say for instance you're trying to uh get a specific answer to a situation or whatnot you can um figure out whatever the question is, meditate for a few minutes or however long that you personally need to or want to meditate. Um, and then as soon as you have a paper and pen uh, near you, and as soon as you uh, stop meditating, the first thought, phrase, um, symbol, picture, whatever, the first thing that pops up in your head, draw it or write it down on the paper. And um, whatever you wrote down on the paper or drew down on the paper, just from your perspective, try to explain what it means to you. Um, like say for instance, oh, I don't even know how to give a freaking example for this, Lord. <laughs> okay, I think I got one. Um, it's kind of simple, but uh, say for instance, you're thinking about moving states um, and your choices are New York, uh, California, and Washington, I guess. Um, so yeah, so you meditate and you ask your question, but usually you want to ask your question prior to meditation. So you would ask your question and kind of, you want to ask your question like three times. I usually go for three. Technically you can go for whatever you want, um, but I, I say at least three. Um, ask the question once, kind of breathe, like do like a um, inhale, exhale, kind of like really deeply feeling the question in a sense I guess is the easiest way to say it um and then ask it again and every single time you ask the question kind of think of your yourself going getting closer to the answer that you're trying to get to um if that makes any sense um but yeah so when you wake up uh, from your meditation or whatever or open your eyes to your meditation whatever the first thought that pops up in your head so say for instance in that particular example um the Empire State Building popped up um, so you know right right then and there okay that's probably where I should be going or that's where something in me wants to go there for a reason pretty much um, I mean most of the time it's not gonna be like as simple as that usually because our brain it's trying to communicate with us and we're still learning in a sense what it is it's not usually gonna be like so um, literal like that it's usually gonna be like a symbol or something like that and you're gonna kind of have to like figure it out like maybe they'll send like shoot i don't know it, it really just depends it depends on your perspective like it's just kind of gonna be kind of hard for me to like figure out but it they'll, it would be like a symbol or something like that that'll pop up and you would either automatically already know what uh which choice it is or you just have to um depending on your own perspective on life and what you've learned 
throughout wherever you are in your journey of life or whatnot, then you would come up with whatever the answer to the, the picture or the image or written word or whatever that you wrote. You're pretty much trying to dissect whatever image that popped up. That, that's legit what it is. Um, but yeah, those are a few, few ways that you can do it. There's obviously so many out there that you can um, try. Um, just a quick little Google search or even on YouTube there's quite a few YouTube videos um, on it too because when I started going down uh, the, technically when I started going down my awakening journey that's when I started like really opening myself up to these gifts a little bit more um, that I mean they've always been there I just kind of shut them out for a long time and then yeah I started just bringing them back in a sense um, but other than that um, you always want to protect yourself or use some kind of protection when you're going down any of these clear senses and you can use any kind of protection you can either use prayer if you're a religious person um you can use sage uh incense crystals um you can use a combination of them or all of them um essential oils like whatever you feel is going to be a protection for you uh will work um whatever you believe in it will work um the biggest obstacle I would probably say with with this would be the fear. You have to get over the fear, uh, especially when it comes to clairvoyance. One of the things that can pop up is um, you being able to see uh, things, <laughs> whether that's being able to see entities in full form or um, being able to see like little bits and pieces um, or even being able to just open up your 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 third eye in the first place and be able to see like those vivid pictures sometimes that can be scary for people you know um, everybody has different fears and different levels of fears and whatnot so yeah fear is gonna be like the biggest obstacle that you're gonna have to um, kind of go through and meditation one is gonna help with that um, again like I said the using protection can kind of help with that because it's like a mental um, yeah, it's like a mental protection in a sense. Salt, you can use salt too. You can kind of like, um, yeah, make, make a circle of salt around you, whether it's uh, regular white salt um, or kosher salt, uh, or black salt. Um, yeah, there's so many, there's so many different ways that you can use protection. Uh, in a sense, the same way that you can protect yourself in this reality, whether that be with a physical weapon, like a gun or a knife or something, um, or whether that be walking away from a particular situation or learning a martial arts um, or having pepper spray, the same way that you can sit there and have physical um, things to protect you from other beings or other things that are not safe, you can do the same thing with this, uh, this side or this dimension. Uh, it's just you just using different tools. That's all. That's it. At the end of the day, that that's really what it is. Um, what else? What else was I gonna say? Take your time. You don't want to rush any of this, and you don't want to sit there and uh, put put so much pressure on yourself so that when you don't meet your expectations, um, you quit <laughs> or you want to quit because um, that can happen. Um, at the same time, if you're not ready for a particular uh, you know, Claire sense, like say for instance, if you, you know, you're opening your uh, Claire's, uh, clairvoyance eyes or whatnot, you actually like see something and that freaks you out and you're like, you know what, fuck this, I'm not doing this anymore. That's, it's okay. Um, you're just not ready to do that right now. <laughs> you can either work on one of your other Claire senses, which at that point, truthfully, I probably wouldn't work on the other Claire sense. I would probably just take a break from it altogether uh, because if you're not going to be able to see them physically with your um, with your eyes, you'll be able to, your other senses will be able to sense them. So you'll be able to feel them or hear them or, you know, different things like that. So I'd probably, if you're really that fearful, I would just stop altogether um, because your mind is what, your mind creates your reality. I'm pretty sure a good chunk of us know that um, at this point. Um, so yeah, if you are coming in there with fearful thoughts or fearful intentions or whatnot, um, things that can make you more afraid will happen <laughs> at the end of the day because that's what that's the energy that you're putting out there. You know what I mean? So it's quite all right if you know you feel like this is not for you and you want to stop. Like there's nothing wrong with that, and don't ever be hard on yourself for it. Um, it's quite all right to take breaks. I've done it quite a few times in my life. You know what I mean? Because um, sometimes I'm just like I get too you know into this reality and and I need to get shit done or you know whatever for whatever reason. It's just 
don't get so hard on yourself. That that's pretty much the gist of what I'm trying to say. Take your time. Um, like this, this not a race. Like you can literally do this at your own pace. Um, yeah. If you're ever confused about a specific thing, like say for instance, if you're trying to get a specific answer for something and you can't figure out whatever the answer is, like whatever the symbol or whatnot that you got, it just makes no no sense to you whatsoever. You can ask clarification. And again, who you're talking to is whoever you believe in. Um, yeah, you can ask whoever you're you were originally speaking to for clarification. You can ask clarification on any in any way, shape, or form. Like you can be like, you know, the next song that pops up on my Spotify list. Let there be a lyric in that song that will answer my question, and it will happen. <laughs> like um, you can sit there and get index cards and write like little like me personally. I have a bunch of index cards that I have, and I write like little. Um, I guess you can say they're affirmations in a sense, but not necessarily. They're just like, uh, like say for instance, if it's a movie quote or something, like something from a movie just like pops out at me. And like, you know what? I feel like I need to like know that. Like, I feel like that that really speaks to me for some specific reason. I write it down in an index card um, or like a song lyric will pop up um, or just like it could be an affirmation. Or if I see a quote that pops up or, like on my social media account, I'm like, you know what? I like that. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. I write it down on my... Um, in uh, my little pile of index cards and whenever I need clarification on something that uh, you know completely different uh, subject or whatever I'll sometimes take out those cards and shuffle them up and the you know whatever card like pops out um, you, yeah like usually jumps out or um, however how we could you can figure out like there's different ways that you can sit there and read your cards and stuff like that that that's a whole another thing in itself but I'll use that as like to, to give me an answer to whatever my question is. Um, yeah, literally how you can do it however. You can be like driving down the street or walking down the street or whatever. And it's like if um, the next bird that pops up to me, uh, if, if no, if it's like if a blue bird pops up to me and let it be like uh, whatever the answer, like you give yourself like two choices or whatnot. And then if like say for instance, I see like a blue bird, that would be for this answer. Or if I see a red bird, it would be for this answer. You know, like you can ask you can make up whatever the hell you want to and your answer will come <laughs> it might not like be completely instant um sometimes it might take a few hours sometimes it might take a few days you know what i mean like don't rush it uh but you will get your answer at the end of the day you will get your answer um so yeah don't ever be you know afraid to like ask for um any kind of clarification and whatnot um yeah, another thing, I guess, because I, I have had some people say, like, well, how do you know if you're talking to something like a good or a bad entity? <sighs> you know. So your body will let you know in different ways, whether that be your heart racing, getting goosebumps, um, your hair raising, like on the back of your neck or on your arms. Um, yeah, your body will let you might get a thought of, of like what's going on or something like that. I um, might hear, you know, something or something might tell you something like you might hear some words or or something like your body will let you know in some way shape or form um again some of those symptoms can also be like medical things like anxiety and stuff like that but you can't you really have to do a lot of dissecting at the end of the day uh so this that's why i said at the beginning like this going down this route can be pretty confusing for a lot of people um and it was damn sure very confusing for me um but yeah, at the end of the day, like I said, your body has all the answers to everything you need to know. So, but yeah, that, that's clairvoyance. Um, I think that's all I need to talk about with clairvoyance. If you guys have anything that you want to add or anything uh, to help, like say for instance, if you're already somebody that has this particular gift pretty developed in a certain extent. Um, and if you have like any other tips, by all means, put it down in the uh, description box for other people, you know, because um, like I said, I don't know everything. I'm still learning personally myself with a lot of this stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that's just really about it, I think.